it's taken down from here, you, you'll know why, and it'll be up on Rumble and Rockfin. Right. So. So this tweet that has almost 100,000 yeah. views from Progressive International. Start this story. All right. Um, today, German authorities, and this was on Saturday also, I believe, fr Friday afternoon. German authorities raided the Palestine Conference, okay, which is an event co-sponsored by a broad coalition of organizations, including Progressive International member DM25, run by Yanis Varoufakis. Some 2,000 Berlin so police say officers. Say that name again. Do you type it fast? Yanis Varoufakis. Yanis Varoufakis. We're going to talk about him later. Yanis Varoufakis. Yanis Varoufakis? Yanis Varoufakis. Some 2,000 Berlin police officers mobilized to block access to the building, disable the live stream, put power to the facility, and arrest participants. Okay. Ghassan Abu Siddha, who's a doctor who was meant to speak about his experiences as a surgeon in Gaza, was detained at the airport and sent yep. home, by the way. This vicious act of repression... That's really loud, your chair. This vicious act of repression speaks volumes to Germany's complicity in the genocide in Gaza. It cannot be allowed to stand. The Progressive International stands in solidarity, of course, with the participants, organizers, and those putting their lives and freedoms on the Speakers. line to oppose the genocide in Palestine, in Palestine and around the world. And look at the fascist pigs surrounding the event, blocking anybody from going, getting in there. That doesn't remind you of like another era, does it at all? Mm -mm. No. All right. Our friend Kathy Vogan no, from over, no. over over in Consortium News, speaking truth is forbidden. She wrote it in German. Uh, like that same era where they where the Porsche was invented? That Volkswagen maybe. Beetle got, got started then? That that could be. They they had a different leader then. So Mercedes. No, Mercedes. It's really funny because um, I was just going to, you know, I, I was struggling to, to find some tweets for this week. And it's yesterday morning and uh, I'm just going through tweets and I'm, I want, I heard about this Palestine conference. So I figured I'm going to cover it. And then this morning, CJ Hopkins drops a banger and he basically, he takes literally the same picture that I had in the, in the tweet. Thank you very much, CJ. Hmm. And he's got to throw his, wonderful snark on there and shit a little bit on Yanis Varoufakis. Um, thank God for the German Varoufakis. hate police or Heil or whatever the appropriate salutation is for these unsung heroes. They just saved us all from hate again. Yes, that's right. Once again, mm -hmm. democracy loving people here in new normal Berlin and all across the new normal world were right on the brink of being exposed to hate quote unquote, and would have been exposed to quote unquote hate had the hate police not sprang into action. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, okay, what had happened was some pro-Palestinian activists organized a Palestine Congress and attempted to discuss the situation in Gaza and call for solidarity with the Palestinians and so on, right here in the middle of Berlin, the epicenter of European democracy, as if they thought they had a right to do that. Democracy. The German authorities were clearly, were clearly intent on disabusing them of that notion. Early Friday morning, hundreds of black and white clad hate police descended on the Congress location. Reinforcements were called in from throughout the nation. Metal barricades were erected on sidewalks. Hate police stood guard at the entrance. The German media warned the public that a potential hate speech attack was now imminent. Berliners were advised to shelter in place, switch off their phones, and any other audio receptive communication devices and wad up little pieces of toilet paper and ran them deep into their ear canals to prevent any possible exposure to the heat. Sure enough, minutes into the Congress, the anticipated hate speech attack was launched. The Palestinian activist, Salman Abu Siddha, who had written an article that allegedly expressed understanding of Hamas and thus had already been placed on the official German no-speak list, started speaking to the Congress on Zoom or whatever, or it isn't quite clear whether he actually even started speaking. According to a hate police spokesperson, they raided the Congress because, quote, there was a risk 
of a speaker being put on the screen who in the past made anti-Semitic and violence-glorifying remarks, unquote. Okay, okay, because they would care. Right? German police. Like. Anyway, the hate police stormed the venue, pulled the plug, dispersed the crowd, and banned the rest of the Palestine Congress, which was scheduled to continue on Saturday and Sunday. They arrested a Jewish guy who was wearing a Palestinian flag kippa, presumably out of an abundance of caution. Love CJ. But these the, are people who want to ban fucking sliced watermelon because it's now anti Semitic. Yep. But the so, hate speech attack wasn't over yet. It was one of those multi pronged hate speech attacks, or at least it involved one other prong earlier that morning, or perhaps while the hate police were still neutralizing the threat at the venue. Dr. Ghassan Abusida, a prominent British surgeon who had volunteered in Gaza and was due to speak at the Congress, was intercepted in the, by the Berlin Airport hate police, refused entry into Germany, and forced to return to the UK. The airport hate police informed the doctor mm. that he was being denied entry to ensure the safety of the people at the conference and public order, he told the Associated Press. You want to talk about dystopian and Kafka-esque. Let's hear from the doctor himself. Yep. The doctor. Doctor? I've just returned to Germany where I had been prevented from entering the country for attending a conference in Germany to give evidence on the war in Gaza and my witness statement uh, as a doctor working in hospitals. So this morning at 10 o'clock, I landed in Berlin to attend a conference on Palestine where I had been asked, along with many um, others in the UK, in the United States and in Europe, to give my evidence of the 43 <laughs> days that I had seen in the hospitals in Gaza, working in both Shifa and Al-Ahli Hospital. Upon um, arrival, I was stopped at the passport office I was then escorted down to the basement of the airport where I was questioned for around three and a half hours. Um, at the end of three and a half hours, I was told that I will not be allowed to enter German soil, that I will, and that this ban will last the whole of April. And not just that, that if I were to try to, set, to link up by Zoom, uh, um, or FaceTime with the conference, even if I was outside Germany, or I were to send a video of my lecture to the conference in Berlin, then um, that would constitute a breach of German law and that I would endanger myself uh, to having a fine or even up to a year of prison. I then was asked at the end to book a flight back to uh, the UK. Uh, my passport was taken away from me and then I only got my passport back as I was uh, boarding the plane. As Germany is defending itself against the Nicaraguan charges that it is an accomplice mm -hmm. uh, to the genocidal war, as described by the International Court of Justice. This is exactly what accomplices to a crime do. They bury the evidence and they silence or harass or intimidate uh, the witnesses. And so as members of a gang that has committed a heinous crime, Germany is doing its bit in that crime which is to ensure that there is complete impunity and so that the genocide can continue uninterrupted. So uh, the Jewish intellectual Hannah Arendt, in the first uh, lecture that she gave in Germany in 1958 after the Second World War, she said, we humanize what is going on in the world and in ourselves by speaking of it. And in the course of speaking of it, we learn to be human. There is so much peril before us. To speak of it in earnest, un we, to understand the causes and the alternative is to practice our humanity. And this crackdown on free speech is a dangerous precedent 
because what is happening in Gaza is a dangerous precedent. We are watching the first genocide unfold in the 21st century. And for Germany to become implicated as an accomplice in silencing the witnesses of this genocide does not bode well for the rest of the century. Again, that is Hassan Abu Siddha, a British Palestinian doctor who's become known for his work in Gaza. My name is Dr. Hassan Abu Siddha. I've just. Okay, who detailed how he was detained, like we just said. He wanted to attend the conference. Mm -hmm. But getting back to CJ's article. Yep. I don't stand for that. Ridiculous. Kai Wegner, who is Berlin's mayor, presumably feeling a bit nostalgic for the fanatical days of 2020 to 23, when one could persecute the unvaccinated with tonal impunity, took to yeah. Twitter to celebrate the hate police's thwarting of the hate event. <clears throat> Thing. Anyone who does not abide by these rules will feel the consequences. Well, and those those people who who watch this show often will talk about well, it should be C.J. Hopkins. No, who's the guy who has the book with yes. the, the you know? Yes, that's C.J. Hopkins. Like, that, that's the same guy. Now, right? The pro-Palestinian activist community attacked him for having a book with a you know yes vague like watermark of a swastika on it right. to allude that you know anti-vax whatever well, like that, that they're questioning that they're, is, at, that they're behaving authoritarian and like nazis right. while they continue Arian. to dis destroy yes. speech and kick yeah. this and kick kick people who are reporting about their experiences in gaza out of the country and not allow them to speak I don't know where they're getting it, where he's getting that from, but okay. the pro-Palestinian activist yep. community also took to Twitter and expressed their displeasure. Giannis, vac vaccinate humanity Verfakis, <laughs> who was one of the organizers and was yeah. scheduled to speak, was particularly incensed over this new German fascism, which apparently he has now just noticed, despite the fact that it's been goose-stepping around in medical-looking mask for the last four years. Oh. Again, another great allegory. He 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 definitely knows how to fit that in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Giannis was I mean, not alone his in his next outrage. Book cover will include a, a a needle with a mustache on it. You know, it just might. <laughs> Giannis wasn't yeah. alone in his outrage. An increasing number of mainstream German journalists, authors, academics, and other members of the professional progressive classes are stunned that the new totalitarian society that they fanatically ushered into being during the so-called COVID pandemic era or stood by in silence and watched it happen is now unleashing its fascist fascistic force against them. Wait, it wasn't supposed to happen to us. No, uh, no. So, which, okay, yeah. I get it. I mean, if I had just spent the last four years behaving like a Nazi, you know, persecuting the unvaccinated, demonizing everyone who refused to wear the insignia of my fascistic ideology on their face and parroting official propaganda like an aerobius, like an enormous Gerbelsian keyboard instrument, or had just stood by in silence while other people did that. Yeah. I would probably want to act like that never happened and pretend that Germany was suddenly going fascist over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and just memory hole the whole COVID thing. I would probably be highly that motivated to do that. Wagner. I would probably, I would probably be highly motivated to do that. But if that was how I had behaved for the last four years, so that I didn't appear to be a total fucking hypocrite will start clicking heels and following orders the moment authorities declare another fake emergency and jack up the fear. Sorry, I've been trying to be less vituperative, but this memory-holding bullshit makes me go ballistic. If there's one demographic that I do not need to hear sanctimonious exhortations to speak out against the global crackdown on dissent form, it's recently ex-Covidian cult leftists. As he so eloquently uses the man in black to give them the, all the finger. In any event, thank God for those hate police. If it weren't for them, well, just imagine the horror if the activists that the Palestine at that Palestine conference 
had been allowed to express their opinions about Israel. They might have said the word genocide or made a reference to a river and a sea. Oh, boy. Who knows what kind of unbridled mm -hmm. hate that could lead to? Perhaps the end of democracy? Maybe even World War III? And then we're not mm -hmm. having that right now. Huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Good times. Good times, everyone. Good times. CJ Hopkins, yep. I love you. CJ Hopkins is the best. He really is just outstanding. Um, you say that about all the Hopkins, you know. Well, Anthony, he yeah. is. Anthony is. DJ is. All right. So, <laughs> speaking of speaking of of Giannis Varoufakis, I said we were going to get to him. So here's Giannis, banned by Germany's Interior Ministry from carrying out any political activity in Germany. And there's the speech. And of course, Judah Friedlander, you know who Judah Friedlander is, right? Yes. Comedian, 30 yeah. Rock. Uh, best com comedian in the world on, a, on his hat. Right? The world champion, that's correct. Um, so I said, you would think yeah. that the world champion could do something. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah. here, here is Giannis. Uh, here's a 16 minute speech. The speech I could not deliver because German police burst into our Berlin venue to disband our Palestine con Congress, 1930 style. Judge for yourselves the kind of society Germany is becoming when its police bans the following words, right? And he's got a list. And it turns out that since German police decreed that Ghassan Abu Siddha would have broken the law if he dared to post a video of the speech, they didn't let him deliver. The same applies to me, so I'm glad to have already broken their pathetic law by posting my speech see below. And yep. there is the full speech, which you can read. I'll put the link to it in the description after the show. <laughs> Who's Giannis? Giannis was the former finance minister of Greece who got into some kind of a mm -hmm. scandal, I believe, if I remember correctly. It was no bueno. Now, yep. was he taken down because he was trying to change shit? I, I, don't, I don't know what the story around him was, but I remember it was not good. Um, but he started this organization, DM25, that, that does some good things uh, on the left and asks some hard questions and seems to be aligned with us, narrative-wise at least, and seeing things the way that we see them. Um, so that was Giannis. Yep. <clears throat>